Welcome to the Sherlin and Shirley Show. Today, my guest is John Righeimer. John has quite the um, uh, name going for him right now. He is he serves as the Sawyer County Republican Party chairman, as well as a position on the state. Now he is now the co-chairman of Chairman. Correct, John? I, and I'm on the executive board of that. So technically, okay. it's the I think the title is Secretary Treasurer of the three oh. executive positions okay. for the chair of chair organization. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, he has a position now with the RPW and the state. And then he also um, has been recently on the Meg Elfson radio show a couple times. He has worked very hard in the Northland, and I know the Northland very well. He's done a great job up there with organizing and working even out of the area. The, the Northland is very spread out. When you go somewhere, it's usually like an hour and 15 minutes away from the place you live. And you're dealing with, you know, knocking on people's doors and talking to people that don't live in your community. He's done a good job of organizing and doing that too and winning a seats up there that have not been won in 35 years or so. It's fantastic to see that. And I know Congressman Tiffany helped a lot. That Tiffany blueprint, uh, winning blueprint, that's fantastic. And I know you were part of that. And I know your son was, and I know a lot of people up there were. Also recently just quoted in the uh, Digital Fox, uh, and I read that article and it was great. So we're going to just have quite the conversation. We're going to talk about the convention, the Republican Party of Wisconsin State Convention that we attended. And it was just recently, it was in June. It was quite a showing for an off season uh, and a lot of things talked about. And we got to see uh, Senator Johnson and uh, Congressman Van Orden ran the, ran the uh, convention this year. And I was very glad that the parliamentarian was Dave Anderson, who I've known for many years, too. So it was quite the group. And I got to see a lot of old friends and make new. And that's always fun. So welcome today, John. And I appreciate it. So maybe you want to say a couple things and then we can get started about the convention because we had quite the conversation last year about the convention. And yes. this year was much different. <laughs> yes. Happy a, to little say. a little hangover from last year, but yeah, much, much different. Um, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I would just say I would, I would echo what you said about the convention. I think on the positives, it was m more attended than I would have thought. I think that was a positive. I think uh, DVO did a great job of, of lack of a better term, running the convention, as well as some of the other folks that were up there at the podium. I thought they kept a little firmer grip on yes. the process that I wish I would have seen in years past. But I think, you know, that's uh, that needed to be done. It, 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 it was hard. It was stronger. And I think that was good. I would have been even more stronger, but maybe I think they handled it well with a balance. Um, so I was impressed with that as well. I was, too. I was very impressed um, with the fact that there was a couple of uh, people on the floor that were trying to cause problems in the beginning. And um, uh, Congressman Van Orden, he wasn't going to have any of it. I think his Navy SEAL came out. And then, Correct. Uh, and then he finally, uh, you know, let the people speak. But um, there are rules and there's rules for reasons. And the rules committee sits for a long time to make these rules. And I feel really bad for the people that work hard and then the rules are violated. I, I don't understand that about us. Um, that happened last year, too. We witnessed it. Um, yeah. and so this year I was glad they put a handle on it and I was glad, and I was also, I thought what a manly thing to do, invite them to lunch. That was really a genuine thing to do. And that probably helped a lot for the afternoon session too. So I think that helped. I mean, I'll, I'll add a little color to that. Um, you know, of the two, uh, whatever you want to call the folks that he invited to lunch, the two of them, one didn't show. So, and the other one, uh, the other one, um, I heard from DVO, directly we happened to see him at dinner uh that night he said oh it went great you know i mean you, it, it went great a cohort of mine looked at each other after he left and said i wonder if it really went great <laughs> I, I mean we know it, we i believe what he said i think what he saw <laughs> yeah he thought it was right. great but i've had those conversations with that sector before and it does seem like it goes great and then you find out behind your back that it's not going so great and sure enough later that night uh, we had heard now, maybe it's not completely true, but we had heard that the person that he didn't meet with or DVO thought it went so great, uh, basically had feedback that it, it didn't go so great that, you know, interesting. Had, so, yeah, which, well, which lead, you know, so uh, to me, that's where I have no patience for that. No, that, me neither. Uh, if, that if you're going <laughs> to, if you, if you don't have guts enough to come to me and talk to me straight faced, then I have no respect for that. I mean, I, I just don't, I can't. 
We, we don't need to tolerate that. And honestly, it was out of line. I mean, it really was. All of us are sitting there going, first of all, learn how to turn on the mic. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, follow the rules. There's well, rules. I think out of line, and, I, and I think I appreciate what DVO did and, and I um, trying to build a bridge. I mean, that's the first thing you would do. Um, I appreciate, uh, I mean, the whole resolution process in general is to let people air their griefs and sure. feel like they're heard. Uh, I just think, you know, going back to, you know, uh, uh, him thinking that went well, and I've had those conversations right. before with those types before, and it doesn't really go well. I think, you know, ultimately we have to get to a point where it's, <laughs> it's this way or the highway, pal. And, um, yep. you know, get on or leave. Um, I, that's where I'm at, but I'm just at a different stage maybe than some. So. Yeah, you're on that journey that I've been on for a long time, too. I, I, I'm where you are. I am like, um, I'm over that. It's all about President Trump riding in on a white horse and taking over. And it's not where I am. And I think Correct. a lot of people still are fighting the 2020 election. And I think we need to move on from that. We need to focus on 2024. And that's where I am focusing on 2024. We've seen some losses. And I think a lot of that has come from um, people who have fought hard in that lane. And yes. um, and I've tried to talk to many, and some of them you can get across to, just like you said, he tried, and some of them you cannot. And you and I both know that some of those people that were there causing that uh, and not following the rules didn't follow rules at caucus either. So we've right, witnessed same it. one. <laughs> yeah, same one. I know. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is, this is like reliving the caucus. Yeah. So it's fascinating, but also frustrating. And for people that really do follow the rules, and there may have been resolutions, and we did. I mean, you saw that. There were some passionate ones going on that we had debate, which is good. That's how we're supposed to do it. It's supposed to work that way. But you know, you and I both know, too, what a resolution is. <laughs> it's a resolution. It's not right. a law. There's no key. Right. No. And, and I'm sitting next to a representative who's telling me, do you know how many times we've had this resolution come up? And we've never done anything with the law towards it. You know what I mean? So right. a resolution is worth what a piece of paper that it's written on and the people who have the passion for it, which I understand 100%. Some of those I had passion for. Uh, the woman right. who spoke about being an immigrant, very passionate, right. wonderful speech, and totally right. would have supported her 100%. Some other ones, you just kind of shake your head and go, okay. <laughs> so... I just think that you and I both have witnessed, and especially over the last few years, it's just been tough road. So I was really pleased. I think um, we can give kudos to the chairman, uh, yep. Brian Shimming. He did a fantastic job. So yes. I'm going to give him a he shout did. out. Yep. And he, Agreed. He kept it going at the pace it was supposed to go at, too, because you and I have both been at, you know, at events where you know, you're there for hours, and it's just back and forth. And this was run much better. So I well, give. Yeah, I, I would agree. It was it was run much better. Um, you know, I was talking to uh, other associates, saying, you know, I, overall, I thought it was a good convention. I felt good about it. I had a good time. And uh, this is only my third convention, but I I, I kind of viewed it, I think, in a proper context. I mean, to me, it was to meet up with friends throughout the state that you don't see quite often, have a good time, have a few laughs try to learn something along the way and, you know, ideally build cohesion to go win elections. I'm not sure if that last part was achieved, but then again, it's kind of an off year too. So that wasn't necessarily, you know, wasn't necessary, but shifting gears here, but still in the convention, you know, we talked about um, fighting the 2020 election and, you know, that's still, there's still remnants of that there. And I think we're still going to see that until Trump, um, uh, you know, exits the scene victorious or as a loser one way or the other. Um, mm -hmm. But I think like even at this convention, the Trump presence was, and I mentioned this to Fox when I talked to them, but they didn't print it because um, they're, they're asking for examples of, you know, why I think DeSantis is gaining, you know, why he performed in that Marquette poll. I said, well, I think the Trump enthusiasm is down. And I think we saw that at the convention. People may not want to uh, agree with that uh, or acknowledge that, but you and I were talking off off air, so to speak. And, you know, when Trump came on with his video message and then there was the four more year chant, much dampened to where I think it would have been years uh, in years past. Yes. I think just the whole Trump presence at the convention seemed tired and forced. Yeah, that was my viewpoint of it. Um, he you know, there was those 
that campaign team, so to speak, walking around. But I think they were cautious because, like I said, I didn't think I had a scowl on my face, but they never came within three, four, six feet of me walking by. Yeah. Um, also, too, anecdotally, if you saw that um, that Trump pair, that Trump swag yes. table. All yes. selling all that weird stuff. Yes. Um, now, a good friend of mine, I didn't hear it directly, but a good friend of mine told me this. I believe him. He was talking to the woman that, you know, runs that stand, and they're from Texas. And she told him that sales were really poor at this convention, and that had she known this, she wouldn't have come up all right. from Texas. Well, I so I think those are all signals that. You know that Trump element, uh, right or wrong, is um, is is dampening. I believe it is too, and I think it's um an interesting conversation to have because I'm having it with people that have been, um, I would say, Trumpians. Obviously, you and I both were. I mean, correct. You know, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I was, was on. The, the past, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, the Trump train. I was on it very early, and mm -hmm. uh, so I understand. And then. I also understand what I've witnessed over the last few years, and it's been really hard to take. But now I'm going to go back to that Fox uh, article because I want to quote. I want to. I want to read a couple of your quotes because I think it's great. Sure. You know, I, you. It said John Righeimer, chairman of the Republican Party of Surrey County, Wisconsin, said he's noticed much more enthusiasm for DeSantis than Trump in recent months, and that's here in Wisconsin. We just don't mm -hmm. think he can win the general, Righeimer said of Trump during an interview with Fox News Digital. I think the Democrats want to run against Trump. I think they know they can beat Trump. Joe Biden stayed in the basement and beat Trump basically just because of the dislike for Trump. And then it goes on to say, your quotes, I don't think Joe Biden can stay in the basement if someone like Ron DeSantis is running, he continued. It will force the Democrats to have to come out and defend what they're doing versus just hope that the undesirables for Trump is enough for them to carry themselves to victory, which I Correct. think is totally true. And I think down here, there was one other thing that you stated and, and it, the people that are paying attention now are probably generally pretty serious observers. And when they look at the issues and approach to those issues that DeSantis is taking versus Donald Trump, I think they're seeing a distinct difference, frankly, he said, and I totally agree with that. Um, it's very interesting to me, to witness what we have been witnessing over the last uh, year, especially the last year past that last convention. And you and I had a conversation about that, and that was um, disgusting. And we have seen many things happen since then. And and I did go, I attended, full disclosure, the Ron DeSantis um, uh, Lincoln Day, they had, it was Marathon County, Lincoln Day dinner, and Ron DeSantis right. was their keynote speaker, and you were there as well. And mm -hmm. we both saw something, a movement there that I think surprised even both of us, you know, and, right. and, yeah. and I think that's happening, especially in our circles. And what gets me is the people sitting in that room. One thing I will say about the convention too, is it was really nice to see that the 68 counties were represented out of 72 counties in the state. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. They, they, uh, Brian Shimming gave that uh, fact in the beginning, kind of at one, one point when he was speaking, that's pretty good. That means yeah, there's people still very the seventh district. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was definitely 60, 68 counties were represented. And of course some, some counties like Milwaukee and stuff were, were highly represented. And some of us were not quite as, as represented, but we still had people there, which is a good thing. Sure. And that tells me there's still people interested and so when you see that, and then we see, we saw there was videos shown there was, um, cause it's an off year. So the, some of the presidential candidates, I know there was, um, Nikki Haley, and then there was, uh, Vivek Ramasamy and I, I yes. loved his message. He has a great message. Good gosh. Um, and then Tim Scott, they all have good messages. I think um, Scott, right? Yeah. I mean, he's great. And then there was Ron DeSantis and then there was president, former president Trump. I was impressed. I mean, you know, I think that Tim Scott's could have been a little more passionate, you know, but I was impressed. Right. Nikki Haley's was rah, rah, sis, kumba. You know, she was, she yeah. did a great one. Uh, Vivek Ramasamy had a great message. Um, Tim Scott had a great, he has a great message. He really does. And I yeah. like him a lot. I think he's fantastic and he would be fantastic too. And then um, I'm like, okay, now it wasn't all of them that gave, you know, videos, but these people did send the videos. So we all listened. 
And then the Santas, his was, I thought, a very powerful message. Of course, I happen to like him. So then when when um, they announced that, you know, it was President Trump and we listened and I remember you and I looking at each other like, what was that? (laughs) It was all about me, 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 me. I did this. I did this. I did this. And, you know, yes, he did on Ron DeSantis. And it's terrible. And then the other thing that that I got out of that, it's not the same man that it was where he said, I'm fighting for you. No. You know, this is about you, uh, the flyover states. This is about the deplor- deplorables. This is about, you know, they're coming after me through you. I mean, I wasn't that. It wasn't any of that. It was all no. about me. And I was really uh, somewhat taken back and a little shocked. And I was also disgusted, truthfully. And I, I, I would My tell wife. him that to his face. I would say, you know, I was very disgusted and you shouldn't have sent the video like that. And I'm tired and I'm tired of that. It's exhausting. And well, it's um, exhausting and I'm I, I'm tired of losing. And that, that's me what, too. you know. Me I talk too. a lot about this with Fo- you know, I talked to the Fox reporter for about 15 minutes and they they, didn't, they left a lot out, but I, I get it. They have to cut it up, but um I said we're just tired of losing. I, I and I said I'm not sure how much more evidence we need. I mean, Trump wins in 16 which is really a perfect storm. I mean, he and, he and he didn't win by a lot. Okay. No. I'm glad he won. I was big time on the Trump train back then. Um, but there was, you know, he was running against Hillary, which he, he was the perfect foil for her. Yep. She's a terrible candidate. Uh, Bernie Sanders had voters that probably stayed home. Uh, that Jill something, the green candidate was, you know, took away Democrat votes. And it was the perfect storm for Trump. Then he loses uh, in essence, essence in 18. You know, we lose Congress. Yep. He loses in 20. He loses in 22 with any close purple state race that he got into, i.e. Wisconsin. I don't know much more we need to, <laughs> to I know. say maybe we ought to go with somebody else. And, and that's what I told them. And I keep telling everybody, you know, people get mad at me and they call me a rhino and because I'm not big on Trump. I used to be on Trump. I started fading for Trump in uh, his third, his fourth year of his of his term uh, when he closed the, you know, did two weeks to clo- slow the spread. That yes. Crazy brow a lot. And then he got more and more behind the vaccine. And then with the whole Tim Michaels and him bashing Rebecca Clayfish, that was like that was the final straw. Um, so my dislike for Trump is I tell people is really, yes, I don't like the guy, but that's separate, really, because in addition to me not liking him, I don't think he can win. So so let's let's try to win. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of this, it, it kind of runs parallel to the Wisconsin election, the gubernatorial election. Right. Do we want to win or don't we want to win? And Mm -hmm. that's what's frustrating about that Trump element. You know, I'm not making a comment on them as people, but I don't think they know how to win. I don't think that that crosses their mind. They're just they're so focused on get Trump into the race and then we're going to get he'll get shelled in general. But that's my opinion. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of feel exactly the same way. I I look at what we've witnessed over the last few years and um you know, I, I sometimes think to myself, how are these poll numbers coming out like that? Yeah. And and then when you see that they polled 700 people or something like that, you know, um, but it does well, shock me. Aren't they? They're, they're national. They're kind of yeah. like national polls and they're cherry. P- and I'm talking about Trump now. Now that Marquette poll, you know, at least it's specific to Wisconsin. And, and right. I think it's, I think it's probably the most legit thing. And really all the, the only polls that should be looked at should be the, the purple states that have any meaning, right. especially if they're talking about a general, you know, so on one hand, I think Trump's whole campaign, I think he's a paper tiger. I, I can, mm-hmm. I could give you that scenario. Uh, but I do have a concern that, you know, he's certainly more potent in a primary to win than the general. And um, we, I don't think can afford to have him as our candidate. If we want to win the general, uh, he's certainly more of a viable threat to win a primary uh, than a general, you know? And so, you know, the media keeps talking him up. He's, he's a gravy train for these people. Well, I think that's what they want to do. I think it's the people sitting in that room that have to make the decisions. And we usually do, because we are the ones that vote in the, uh, primaries. 
and yeah. ho- hopefully people will get the message um, and they will they will do what's right. I mean, you know, I, I'm not and, and I've never been against him at all. And I do think that he has definitely changed. He's I think he's now more vengeful. He's vengeful. Yeah. He's angry and he's vengeful. And I don't think that's a way well, to win to an election. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes me a little bit sad. You know, because he did have a lot of good policies. You and I both agreed that his policies were great. The economy was going great. But I agree with you totally. When he shut down the economy, my civil liberties were violated. Uh, If I had been a small business owner at that time, number one, who do you think you are telling me who's essential, who's not? Who do you think you are? You're not giving me a paycheck. I mean, I have to live. I have to pay my bills. And then it's going to be two weeks. Well, that didn't work. And then all of a sudden, a, a bureaucrat who we both know, Dr. Fauci should never, he should have, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's really what happened, and and then this vaccine, vaccine warp speed, it's not a vaccine, you know, there's been a lot of things that have proven that now, over time, that um, it didn't work, and people died, and and more people died on Biden's watch than on Trump's watch, so yeah. it's this whole, and, they, and the media just stirs it all up, so that's why we have to rely on podcasts and in our type of media getting out there. Thank goodness for the Meg Elfsons. Thank goodness for Fox Digital. Thanks, you know, thank goodness for um, different podcasts that will talk about this kind of stuff. What do you think? On, uh, do you think Trump, see, I don't think Trump's going to debate. Do you think he'll debate? Well, in the I, primary? Think, I do think he can be a narcissistic man. And I think that it would be awful hard for him to turn down tearing people up on that stage because they're going to tear, you know, Chris Christie's going to tear him apart. That's why Chris Christie yeah, so got in it. I think out of the first one, and then maybe he comes later after that. See, I think, I think strategically. See, if I was advising him with my, you know, neophyte strategy, yeah, I would say don't debate. I mean, right. I think, I think if he if he can continue to throw out these, uh, dare I say, fake polls or you know, stupid yeah. polls that show him in the lead, he can say, well, I don't need to debate. And just again, again, he's a more viable candidate in a primary than a general. And the reason I thought of that, Cheryl, is that the you talked about the COVID thing. I mean, DeSantis is going to shred him up on COVID yeah. at a debate stage. And what's Trump going to do? He's going to respond with insults. I, and, maybe, and maybe his his following loves that. Maybe that's that all he is has what, to say. That but, is what he does. That is what he's good have at. No answer for the stuff and no coherent answer. Um, and I think he hurts himself, you know, I can really, you know, if, if you're DeSantis, you need to get him on that debate stage to, to narrow that, if there is a gap, to narrow that gap. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I just don't, I I guess I, I think you're right. I didn't think of that. He has a huge ego. He does. Sorry, man, I also think there's a scenario he'll never get up there. Well, I, just hurt him. I sometimes think about that too. I think to myself, well, if he's showing this far ahead in the polls, why should he? But then again, if you don't, you're not giving the voters what they want. If if I if somebody won't debate, then I'm not going to vote for them. I am not going to vote for them. If you can't get up there and stand up for what you believe and stand up for what you want me to know about you, I'm not going to vote for you. And that's it. I, I agree. I think it hurts him if he doesn't debate. But you know, he, it them, hurts him. They- it hurts him among people like you and I. But does it hurt well, yeah, him? Yeah, it might even you know, hurt him among uh, uh, casual observers that are going to vote but aren't part of that cult. Mm-hmm. Uh, it may hurt him with that. But they're probably looking at, well, it, it, he's in a bad situation. Uh, it yeah. hurts him if he debates. It hurts him if he doesn't. I just think it hurts him more if he does. Yeah. If he does debate. However, you know, you don't, you know, campaign teams have their own internal polling that they're not sharing. Right. And so maybe the internals, maybe the reality that we think is out there, they see in their internal. So maybe he would debate knowing that all these polls that they're throwing out, there are all, you know, I heard a lot of the polls that they were uh, paid for by the Trump campaign anyways. Right. And that was early on. He's been doing his polling thing for months now. Oh to yeah. To try to show that it's, it's inevitable. I'm inevitable. Right. right. I'm, I'm such a, the, the surefire. So I'm far the ahead only, that I'm inevitable. only candidate. Yeah. I'm the only one. Yeah. Who can win. And, uh, I think it's interesting because only one he attacks really is DeSantis. That's it. I don't see yeah, him attacking. He sees him as the threat, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And that is his that is his mo. That's what he does. He, obviously, if he becomes the nominee, then I guess we have to deal with that. I hope for our sake and for the sake of the country. Truthfully, we've had so much going on, 
And we have, you know, China squeezing, we have uh, Putin, Russia squeezing, uh, everything is happening. And we, even North Korea, we have all these things, Iran, all of it going on. We don't even, still don't know what's going on in Afghanistan. And that disgusts me to no end, being a former military uh, person who served proudly. And now even the military recruitment is down like, what, 25,000 people? Yeah. I mean, and you know why? Because people don't have pride in the country and they're not going to join when all this DEI stuff is going on, diversity, right. equity, inclusion. I don't need to know that you can go into the military and change from being a man to a woman, whatever. That's ridiculous. Right. I need to know that you can fight next to me for our country. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't understand it. So this stuff is going on and normal people, literally normal people living like you and I out in the areas we're living in, rural Wisconsin and all, we think the same ways. We may not agree on everything because we, we never will probably with, with people on the other side, on the other side of the aisle, but I still respect them. And we probably could agree on 60 to 70% of the things going on. So the other 30%, let's fight about. When we fight amongst ourselves, it doesn't look good. We have to use that energy to fight against them. You know, let's bring out what they're doing and not well, fight our and, own. And, yeah. And our primaries, and this is statewide too, our, our primaries, you should bring out the best candidate. They don't. Um, and we have to, you know, because too many people are, you know, like you said it earlier, we're, they're, they're, this is a vengeful thing for Trump. This is about vengeance. This is about avenging 2020. Well, I just don't see a path for him to win the general. You have to win independents and moderates in the general to have a chance at winning. Now, it's not going to be, let's say DeSantis does win the primary. It's not going to be easy. No. But he, he, by default, he has a better chance of winning moderates and in, in, um, in, in independents because he's not Trump. Yes. Did you That's see just the, the way it is? You saw the interview with Brett Baer, I'm assuming. I saw parts. You know, of I was I was at a, a fundraiser when that was going on, oh, uh, so I, I didn't. Really, I saw it in the background. I didn't really. Uh, you uh, should watch it. Look on YouTube at one question that Brett Bear asked him. One question, and it just turned my stomach. Brett Bear said, "Mr. Uh, Mr. President, how do you expect to win the independent soccer moms, suburban moms out there, who um, are you know looking at to vote for someone? How do you expect to win their vote?" when you lost in 2020. And he yeah. said, I didn't lose in 2020. <laughs> That's what he, well, said, he said, John. The convention thing too at his Yeah, yeah, his he did. But yeah, he's, in the video. Brett Bear and Brett Bear is sitting there, Mr. President. You know, like like he's given him a, a good question and he wants a good answer and President Trump kept saying, I didn't lose 2020 election. I won. Brett Baer, you need to understand, I won. He said it like four times. And, and yeah. Brett Baer went on to something else because he's like, you know, I'm trying to give you an out here. I'm trying to get you to understand that there are independent women that will not vote for you. And you know that that is what it is here in Wisconsin. A lot of the vote yeah. is that women who are independent and oh. that will, and they just do not like him. They don't. I had friends that told me flat out that, you know, um, I'm tired of him. I'm tired of his stuff. I'm not going to. Well, that goes back to that that Trump element of you know earlier. Maybe we were offline. We were talking about this, but where you know certain folks have to get on board with the plan about winning, and and Trump is not a winning formula. And let's say DeSantis wins the primary, and you know there's going to be a hardcore Trump faction that probably stays home. That that's the group that probably never voted. A lot of them, I should say, didn't vote at all until Trump came along. Okay, that was that was the appeal of Trump. Oh wow, maybe there's something here. But over the time we've seen that that is what it is. It was magic. It was lightning in a bottle. Um when Trump goes, good or bad, that contingency that never voted before, they're going they're going away. So they're my point is they're going to stay home, but that's a good trade for us. As far as if you want to win. Right. So that hardcore Trump follower stays home. We lose. That's one. Now, I don't know if my numbers add up here because I'm just making it up. But that's one that stays home. But we pick up 1.4 soccer mount. Right. Exactly. So that's my that hope. We're, we're, we're a win. I'd like to have both. Right. But let's live in reality. I know that's why I don't seek to extend an olive branch out to that very, very hardcore Trump person because there's no there's no winning them. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But I, I tend to agree with what you're saying because it's. Um, I thought his policies were fantastic up until COVID hit. Um, I think there were a lot of things done 
incorrectly, and my civil liberties were violated more than anything, and they still are to some degree today. Uh, when one of the questions is the very first thing people ask you, I, have you been vaccinated? I think that's just yeah. unflipping believable. <laughs> Uh, and well, you my- know, I talked about his policies. I don't know if you heard Bill Barr. I saw Bill Barr say something a few weeks ago, and he was asked something about the question about Trump's policies. And he said, I'm paraphrasing, you know, yeah, they were he had good policies. He said, but let me tell you this. If you like Trump's policies, he's the last person that I can think of that can execute them. Mm-hmm. And he went on to say about Trump not having an interest in the legislative process, didn't understand it when he came in, didn't care to understand it cripples him as he's trying to get policies across. Right. Uh, and I think he had great policies. He did, you know, I, and most of his wins, if you will, I think were foreign, where I think a president, you you can exercise the executive power much more na- uh, uh, internationally. When you get the national stuff, you have to understand how the legislative process works. And I think he is hindered there. So, yeah, well, um, I know that Here's- it's going to it's going to be an interesting um, ride. And I know that uh, you and I <laughs> agree on most of it. And we also know a lot of people that uh, already don't like what we talk about. You know, well, I mean, that's people- exactly, that's exactly right. They don't want to hear, you know, just our, our opinion real quick. Cause I know we want to get into what Ron Johnson said at, at um, yeah. convention, but on the DeSantis Trump thing, I just saw yesterday. So I think the, was it the second quarter? Uh, fundraising thing was reported. Oh yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, Trump reported, I think, thirty-five million, and um, was bragging about it. The DeSantis super PAC never backed down. So uh-huh. Trump raises thirty-five million. DeSantis was like one hundred and twenty-five million. Holy buckets! You're kidding. So so Trump and uh, social media they're they're bragging about the thirty-five million, and then after that, the DeSantis numbers came out, and then the Trump narrative is well. You know, that doesn't matter. Now, now, now fundraising doesn't matter. Oh, I see. That is a huge shot in the arm. I mean, that tells you. Yes, it does tell you. It it definitely does. It makes me uh, like right there. It just brought a smile to my face. Is it also I understood that um, that Trump's numbers like his uh, financials, that was a couple of different groups. Some of that stuff is done fishy. It's very interesting. Yeah. And I learned a lot about that. Like a certain percentage goes here and a certain percentage goes there. It's kind of shaky. So I'm very cautious. And, you know, I've always been cautious. I'm tight with my money anyway, because I am a conservative. I give money to candidates that I want to give money to. I do not um, just crap my money away because I can't. That is very interesting. I had no idea. Thank you, John, for sharing that. It makes my day. And I could be off on some of the numbers and so forth. But that yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Well, and what I heard was like uh, Trump's was from like three different areas because he has a certain super PAC, then he has this, and then he has that, you know, America, great, something or other. So yeah, that's amazing. And I can tell you, it's like you, you know, at the convention, when I saw these young men, it was all young, all young people with the Trump hats on and with their clipboards going around and they had stickers. Oh, would you wear a sticker? And I just said, you know, I don't, I don't really want to put a sticker on, you know, thank you very much, but no, trying to be nice after the first time and then the second and then the third. And, you know, you know, Shirley, who wasn't on today. I'm sorry, Shirley, you missed it because I know what (laughs) she would have said, but she was like, you know, if you ask me one more time, (laughs) she was right. So it's like, you know, I wonder, you know, I just wonder why that, Trump, you know, people, some people are saying, well, geez, you know, Trump's got a presence here with those kids. I don't know what they're getting paid, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour. I mean, DeSantis is busy campaigning in Iowa and South Carolina and New Hampshire and kind of where you should be. And he's on the ground. Right. So I I just don't even know if that was a good spend for Trump. I I don't know. You know, who knows how much it costs to be at Wisconsin. But yeah. But yeah, I think we'd be remiss if we did. I almost forgot about it. But Ron Johnson's talk at convention. You want to tee that up? Yeah, I do. Um, He got on the stage and, you know, everybody goes crazy because, you know, honestly, that's one of the things that we can fight, John, just to go off of here for one second, is that when people say that, you know, it, they cheat, they cheat in 2022. That's why Evers is the governor. No, they don't. Because why would we have Ron Johnson where he is if that happened? That's my comeback for that now. And so when he came on the stage, which everybody did go crazy, and we are very pleased that we got him replaced, even though I know are reelected. I know that Ron Johnson did not want to run again. And it is a commitment. It's six years. And, you know, he came on that stage. And then when he talked his speech, it was quiet. You know, you got a lot of people in that room. That room was packed. 
Yeah. And it was really quiet. And then when he mentioned, when he started talking about pro-life, and I thought this was so interesting because his ideas are really good. He's like, hey, we got to talk about the 900 pound elephant in the room. I thought he was going to talk about Trump. You know, I didn't know. <laughs> and he went right to pro-life. And I'm like, well, that's the other 900 pound, you know. The other one. And it was very interesting what he said. And I thought one of the things that he said was really profound was, you know, I want to get the very best. I want the very best on each side. I want the very best on this side. And I want, and he did it with his arms, you know, showing the right side. I want the very best on the left side. And then I want to sit here and I want rooms like this full of people. We have to have rooms full of people and we need to go around. He goes, I'll be happy to go around and be the moderator, be in the, in the state. And then he said, and then we're going to have a piece of paper and we're just going to start with, you know, um, conception. Number one, that conceptions right at the top. When does life start conception? Then he said, we're going to have numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, write down a list. And then he said, and we're going to ask each side, tell us when you think, tell us what your, what, what your fight is on this, on conception. Tell us what it is on one month, what, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months, eight months. Tell us the history. Tell us what it is. What is a baby? What, what is it in the womb? What does it look like? What, what goes on in these things? And he said, and when we get to the six, seven, eight months, nine months, when the other side wants to be able to abort, kill the baby, and it's a baby, you know, it can live outside of the womb by then, it's life. Then you start hitting the heads of people going, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense because the common people out here are not getting that message because all we do is say, no, 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 no. And they have to understand. And that's how they pounded Justice Kelly. They pounded him. That's how she won. She won on abortion. That's it. She didn't win on anything else. And it's like amazing. And when he said that, and it was so quiet in that room, and I thought everyone is listening to this, and this is really important for us because we have to have the conversations. Um, It's interesting because, you know, my friend is pro-choice, but to a degree. She also thinks it's crazy when they get up to that, you know, where if you're in a car wreck uh, and somebody's drunk and they hit you, and you have a seven-month-old child in your belly, and they kill you and the child, well, they get charged with vehicular homicide for two. Double. And that's where I say, well, if that happens, then it's got to be something like that if you have a baby in your stomach at seven months and you abort it. It would have to be a good reason. Now, if the mother's going to die and they make a choice, I understand that. If, If something horrible has happened, I understand that. And I think most of us normal people can. But I can't justify someone just killing a child in their womb when it's seven or eight months old. I don't, I don't, I can't, my brain can't comprehend that. I do think we have to have discussions about it. So people out here, just the regular Janes and Joes go, wow, I didn't know they were doing that. I didn't know they think that should be a law. I didn't know that they agree with that. And that's where Tony Evers, all of them, you can't tell me Number one, our kids are freaking failing. You have done, he was in education for 40 years. He was the DPI superintendent and now he's the governor and we are so far behind. We are failing. I mean, 70% of the kids in this district I live in can't even read on grade level, fail, but yet you want more money, more money. Did you know, did you know that Wisconsin as a state is below the reading level of uh, Mississippi? Yes. Yes. It's disgusting. And yeah, these that's... are things, these are things, you know, that we're not talking about. And these are things we have to talk about. And life is one of them. So yeah. I say I am a pro-life person. I am. But I also understand that we have to come to some kind of terms on this. And like um, people say that what Ron DeSantis did in um, Florida, Governor DeSantis, could be something that hurts him in a general. Could be. I don't know. But the people in Florida liked it or they wouldn't yeah. sign the bill. We have to come to some kind of terms, and states should be the ones doing that. And I still am a pro-life person, but I know that we have to talk about this or we will not win because that's what they pound us on constantly. Absolutely. It has to be talked about. There has to be a message. I also, too, am very pro-life. I wish the electorate was as pro-life as I was. The electorate in Wisconsin, Madison, Milwaukee, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're just not there. So if you make it a s- too simplistic, no abortion or abortion, we lose that at the ballot box. You know, in general, we, 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 we're in a purple state. We, our candidates need to be as conservative as we can have them be, 
but still pass the muster with the electorate, right? So yes. um, the electorate's not there. Um, I think I may have said this to you. I think it's a great example. Uh, Scott Jensen, who lost in Minnesota, the governor race, a few weeks after he lost, he was talking about abortion. And he was basically saying what you're talking about in that we are losing at the ballot box on the abortion issue. And mm-hmm. not only are we losing the we're, we're losing what we want as pro-lifers um, at the ballot box, we're, we're losing a lot more because in the process, we're losing elections left and right. Yes. Um, and that's that's like that heated issue. And mm-hmm. he said something that he's pro-life. He said, but to win the pro-life battle, so to speak, it's not going to be at the ballot box. The electorate's not there. The electorate in Minnesota, he was talking about, does not want this legislated. I, I think you can say the same in Wisconsin, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, and I hope I have these years right, but I, I'm pretty sure he said in 1983, there were, uh, I think he said 40, 40,000 abortions in 1983, or 20, it was 20,000, 20,000 abortions in 1983. And that was cut in half in 2022. No, so it was 40,000 was cutting to like uh, under 20,000 in 2022. So even if I got those numbers wrong, his point was that the abortion rate was greatly reduced over time. And that wasn't done through legislation. That was yeah. done through education. That was done through what Senator Johnson was really talking about. And that's getting people to understand what are we really talking about here? Right. Um, that we can't legislate cultural issues or we can only do so to a certain extent. And if we campaign on cultural issues, we're going to lose at the ballot box. Well, and there's many organizations out there who fight for this. Uh, and I and I yeah. can agree with them. They can still fight for that. They can lobby. They all they, yeah. Yes, I, absolutely. And you and I agree with them, you know. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to, like you say, the electorate, they're the ones pushing the ballot boxes. And if it's that one issue, and there are people that are one issue voters, right. many people I know are one issue on that. That's how they vote. That's the way that it is. Then we have to talk about it and we have to come to some kind of agreement and it may not be something. And this is the thing that gets me is that I try to get people to understand is it may be something that I don't really like. You know, it may be. I can at least uh, live with what we have to live with because we've been doing it now. And it's worse. It's bad because we're under a Democrat governor who yeah. who vetoes things. And then like right now, when we had our last legislative update from uh, our representative here, Scott Krug, he talked about, you know, the school choice and that, you know, you have to give a little to get a little and things like that. And he talked about that and he talked about tax cuts and things like that. Um, and that's what we all want. And he said, and, you know, the thing is that if our budget gets signed, the governor is going to take credit for a lot of this. And he, he is. That's OK. We yeah. we got we got something. And sometimes you have to give a little bit to get a little bit. And, and mm-hmm. that's where we're at with this. And that's what I think Senator Johnson was trying to get across to that room full of people who are first liners. He was trying to get across to them. Sometimes we have to give a little bit to get a little bit. And if you don't get elected, you're not going to have any changes. <laughs> well, correct. You, you have to, you know, I often say my mantra feels like is a political party is a platform for candidates to compete, to win elections, establish majorities and enact legislation. That's it. Yeah. Um, so we have to win first before we can do any of that. And I think, um, you know, I do agree with Johnson that that has to be talked about. It has to be, um, it, we can't just keep going the way we are, or we're going to keep losing elections uh, with that main point that the Democrats use as a hammer over us. And we, I hope, because I am pro-life, I hope that the ones that they're pro-life, that they don't say, well, I'm not going to vote. But again, I guess we have to take that risk because Dan Kelly losing by the amount that he did shows that there's just not enough religious voters out there, I guess. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. so we have to we have to massage things. I mean, you know, and, and you know, I always say too that you know, I'm I'm a very conservative right right wing whatever you want to call it person, but I also have to be realistic about winning elections. Yes. I and, and, exactly and maybe same. after winning a, if we establish majorities and can maintain majorities for decades at a time, maybe we can look more like Indiana, which is super majority Republican or these other states that are very mm-hmm. red, but we're right. we're decades away from that. Well, one thing that's good is we do have our state legislature that is uh, red and uh, Senate as well, and I'm pleased to see and that. Continue to say so, yeah. Even yeah, with the it line, should. 
Right. Yeah. Even with that. Yes. And and the one thing is that the people that live in all these different districts are voting in these people that agree with us. But yet the governor, it was a total different kind of story. So it was very interesting. And, well, I've, we, pro- I've, and we probably we probably don't stand a chance of beating Tammy Baldwin. And I was, you know, I was saying to somebody the other day that I'm not even upset at Tammy Baldwin. Tammy Baldwin's nothing to me. I, I'm upset that we can't come up with an answer that has made her basically unbeatable. She's unbeatable. And I don't even know if it's because of her or because we just can't seem to come up with an answer slash candidate slash strategy slash organization. Well, if you think about it, but if you think about it, she fits all their little categories, you know, She's a oh, yeah, woman. Certainly. She, she you know. checks off all the boxes. Yes, there's, there's no exactly. doubt about it. She's, right. she's very benign on things. Yeah. And and um, the liberal elitists are going to love her. And we have a lot of those in our state. Like you said, we're purple and we have to learn to live with that. I'm grateful see, that. That's where I talk about organization as far as, I mean, <laughs> on the one hand, Johnson wins. I'm thankful. Me too. He did a lot of good things in that campaign. One, he was able to somewhat match them dollar for dollar, but a lot of that was because the Mitch McConnell Senate reelection. election <laughs> mm-hmm. um, So how do we duplicate that for non-incumbent senatorial <laughs> Uh, candidates. So that's a tough one. On the one hand, he he barely beat a crack addict, but on the other <laughs> hand, he did he did uh, he did uh, what's the term? He he identified who Marcella Barnes was, right? Yes, he, yes. He 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 framed him. That's the term. Yes. He framed he him. Yes, he did. But nobody frames Tammy Baldwin. Nobody really frames Tony Ebers either. Yeah. Well, maybe, I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna, when I maybe. talk to other like. When I talk to legislators, here's what I hear from legislators. He's, and I agree, I think they're telling the truth. He's a stuffed suit. He's nothing. It's not really him. It's what's behind him. It's very much like Joe Biden. Sure. Okay, fine. Yeah. That's probably the case, but that's not framing him. Let's start framing Tony Evers for how we want to frame him and what the actions are that he does. He's an evil man. He should have been he, fired a long time ago just right. for what he, he did with schools. Just for that's what you do I mean, with education. Frame him. He you know, he he needs to be framed. I mean, because that's an advantage the Democrats have. They they're kind of like this elusive, you know, yeah. thing. And Tammy yeah. Baldwin isn't framed either. But it takes a lot of money to frame somebody, right? And you need a great well, candidate to go against them, and it's it's not easy. But no, no, it's I don't not. know how I got on that uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I no, I understand it one hundred percent because we were talking about Ron Johnson, and so it goes right to she's running again oh, this, right. next year. Right. So right. it does open us up and and we've got Senate and presidential. So it's like this fight that we're going to be in, which we're always in one. It seems like we're always two steps you know, behind in the fight. We do fight well. We're not stupid. And, you know, we are getting older, though. <laughs> it's becoming well, a little tougher. Here's the beautiful way I look at that. I saw and I'll forward you this uh, email I got with an article and it goes into it really kind of highlights the strengths that the Democrats have in running elections and our weaknesses. And and I'm paraphrasing and being general here to cut to the chase. But Democrats are very good at raising money outside the political party, right? They, by much more so than the Republicans are. So they have, you know, activist groups that are raising money. But ultimately, it all comes back into the Democrat candidate's cause, right? Mm-hmm. And they're they're kind of elusive. They're where Republicans are more. We're they're going to donate directly to that candidate, right? We don't have as many activist groups. Anyways, what I'm getting at is we're we're being outraised. We're out organized. We and I'm looking at it and I'm going, gosh, how do we? Where's our comeuppance? How do we match this? How? Well, you know, I think in the long our long term goal ought to be to mirror them and be able to do those things. But in the short term, we're just not there. And I think to beat them is we have to say, well, where is our st- – because inherently in a conservative, aren't we all kind of individuals, right? We're all independent. Yes. And so let's – that's there's good and bad to that. So I guess let's try to take advantage of it. I think to win, we need a rock star candidate who can basically do most of the heavy lifting on their own and clear the primary path and do our best to raise money in state and out of state. I don't know if we're going to be there in time for Tammy Baldwin. Well, we might. You never know. There's some stars, I think, um, rising stars in our party. I, I see that. Uh, young Do you think enough, it's time for, for 20, for 24? 24? Could be. I, you know, I can't be positive. I can't, you know, 
I see some and I think to myself, you know, let's see. I will say this. I'm going to say this. and I'm not going to keep you much longer, John, because I know you're busy yeah. too. Yeah. And it is Friday. You know, you should be out on a boat. Or something. Rambling. <laughs> no, you're not rambling at all. I, I totally get it 100%. And we have to strategize. That's the other thing. You know, like-minded yes. people need to talk to each other. We need to strategize. And we didn't get enough time to talk at the convention, by the way. Um, no, we you didn't. Know, yeah. And our thing was we were staying at a hotel that was like, you know, in a different state because <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we, because well, we had to, I mean, it was only 11 miles, but still the way that that's yeah. laid out there is weird. I mean, I loved the place. We yeah. they had a convention there. I think the last one was maybe 2006 or something. It was a great one. And I love the place and I love where it's located. The river is beautiful. Sitting out on that patio is wonderful. You know, we had to leave and we left and we go back to our hotel. So we're gone for, you know, the rest of the day or whatever. So I didn't really get to talk to you that much, but, um, I do see, I mean, I, I see, and I want to say this, I want to say uh, the speaker right now, the assembly speaker, Robin Voss, there were a lot yes. of people that were really out against him. And you and I both know that. And that toss Voss thing, which drove me crazy. But I have to say, I think he's done a fantastic job too. Wonderful. Uh, One, I, he withstood the storm of that nonsense. He continues yes. to fight and yes. he is uh, one of the best conservative things we have going for us in the state. Uh, he really is. Assembly, he's, right? Yes, he's very strong. He's stronger now, I think. Maybe that helped him. Would agree. You know, I think that's not a bad thing. Sometimes having a tough primary and seeing what happens. And at that time, I think it was the whole 2020 thing. And I think that um, he did a good job. And now I just see a stronger, more humble person as well yeah, as a leader, as well as a leader. And I am impressed by that now. So he's earned yes. his spot. And and I tried to explain to some people, you know, when you're elected, number one, um, you're elected. That's who your representative is. So you learn to deal with it. You know, you need to talk to them respectfully. I always have. I've never been disrespectful to any of them. I don't care who they are, even the ones I had to fight against. Yeah. I was always respectful. I see a change. I see a strength in him that I hadn't seen before. And I saw him. Well the, yeah, I saw him at the convention and talked to him for a little while. And it was good. I'm I'm pleased to see that. And so I just wanted to mention him because I think that um, he doesn't get enough credit sometimes. And I'm not trying to pat him. I'm not trying to do that. I, it doesn't matter because I don't talk to him that often. Once in a great well, while. I'm glad you brought that up. And I met him for the first time there. Uh, I thought it was a nice few minute conversation. But I'm glad you brought that up because um, with the vetoes that just happened, you know, it's easy. You know, it's easy for me. I'll speak for myself. I get maybe a little too negative. But going back to the convention. And what's going on positive? I'm glad you brought Robin Voss would be in the positive column. Right. Correct. And I agree totally with that. And that's why I wanted to mention him because uh, he didn't get much kudos at the convention. He did get to speak for a few, which was good. And he was there. I mean, I saw him a lot. I actually had a good conversation with him and his well, wife. And the, and the, and the Voss related um, resolution that was going to be brought from the floor never even got um, you know Correct. announced, so to speak. Correct. So that was squashed. With all, and I think a lot of that was the heat that the entity that was bringing that forth was getting, lack of a better way to say it, behind the scenes. Yes. And um, I think they 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 started reversing course. Rightfully uh, and, so. And, 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 Rightfully yeah. so, John. So I'm yes. I was pleased. I was pleased to not have to have that. That's a positive. <laughs> yeah, it is a positive, and that's what I'm saying is we need to end it on a positive because you know yeah. some of the stuff we talk about. I mean, it can be like. It can be get you a little bit where you go, well, 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 why are we fighting if we don't think we can win? Well, we can win. It's just that we have to strategize properly and be prepared and work hard. And we always have to work hard. We're always we always work harder than them. I don't understand that. <laughs> but well, I know. And I think it's yeah. And it's uh, uh, to learn. hopefully we learn from our errors in the past. Yes. And we and we do have a big mountain to climb. That's that's the that's the downside. But if you're going to climb that mountain, we have to be patient. We have to be content with little wins here and there, year, day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out, election cycle in and out. And if we do that in four, eight, 12, 16 years, great things can happen. You know, and I Absolutely. think that's where we have to, I always remind myself of that because yeah. it is a, um, we are deep purple, right? Yeah, I we mean, are. So, yes, I'm we are. State. Yes. Yeah. And, um, so that's that's where the challenge is, you know, in, in, in our district. And we have a fight here. Um, you know, Chan's Green will be coming up uh, in 24. Mm -hmm. um, Angie Sapek will be coming up. I don't know where the lines will be drawn there. But, you know, that's not 
if Trump's at the top of the ticket, that's going to be a little harder climb. But I think, you know, we have to we have to protect what we earned, like you said yeah. in the beginning. Right. 36 years that we didn't have that. So yes. and I think we can. So those are the small wins we have to continue to. Uh, yes. To reflect and, upon to keep us going. Yes. And we've talked about that, that, you know, let's focus on our locals. Let's focus on what we can do. And let's try to work together to accomplish everything else that we can and to keep what we've got. Because we do have, we and, almost know, got the super majority, which would have been fantastic. We're very close. Yeah, and, exactly. And I said, you know, another positive, I think, uh, who is, uh, I'm very, uh, Brian Shimming. I, I oh, think yeah. he's done a fantastic job. I think he Me inherited too. a tough, inherited a tough situation. I think he's working hard and I think he cares. I think that's another positive, uh, not only from also, the convention, but overall. Yeah. I also think he understands. He understands exactly what we're talking about. He knows. And yes. uh, I think he did a fantastic job there, too. But I've seen him everywhere. He's everywhere. So that's really good to know, too. And and as the state chairman, you didn't see them that much. And, and he's out there talking. He's out there, you know, doing which he has a great radio voice anyway. You know, so yeah. he's good at it. Accentuating his positives and, and yeah. working hard. Yeah. Yes. And then the only other thing that I would mention was I was really happy to see a lot of young people. I was like, holy cow. I mean, like the chairman of Milwaukee is 22. What? The uh, yeah, vice, right. yeah. yeah, the vice chairman is like 23. He's like the youngest vice chair in the state. Uh, the yeah. chairman for Dane County, Dane County, yeah. okay, was like 22. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the heck is happening here? Saw the yeah. turning point uh, table, which I was happy to see. So there is a lot of good, and those guys they got a lot of energy in them. <laughs> so yeah, so there's yeah there's there there's things that you know it's not going to happen overnight. We we no. um, and I think this may sound negative, but I think um, it's not it's meant to be positive. I think we have to temper our expectations. That doesn't mean we don't try to beat Tammy Baldwin, but you know unless something strange happens it's she's the favorite right so let's not get all up in arms if she ends up winning and oh we were it woes us and blah, blah, blah. you know what i'm saying yes. i hate saying that it sounds like i'm giving up before it even starts but we also have to be realistic and yeah. and not have that and, and that's all strategy though right it's look where can we win where do our resources go where do we spend our time those are the things we have to to do and and if we lose the tammy baldwin it's uh Mainly because we're just not ready to take her on yet. Yeah, I think we really have to, have to whoever it is, um, has to come up with some kind of a strategy uh, to, like you said, form who she is, what she's really about, what her voting past has been, because she votes well, I think totally. Hub, and I think Hubby could do that. I don't know if Hubby's going to be the one. Um, I think Hubby is sharp guy. I think he could at least try to frame her. I don't right. think he'll be afraid to frame her. Uh, you know, again, the money is always tough because the right. Dems are going to they're going to bring it. And you know, um, I know he's a rich guy, but you know, he's not going to self fund the whole thing. And right. just a, somebody ought to be appealing to Mitch McConnell and the reelection for Senate committee to, right. you know, lot for Wisconsin. But then, you know, I mean, I'm sure well, they might because, you know, well, Wisconsin is I'm, sure, I'm sure Mitch and company look at it and they're, they're going to make decisions and strategy too. Right. Is it right. Is right. The money spent there or somewhere else? So, right. And here's the thing is it's up against a, a presidential election year and Wisconsin is very important. And that's why the spotlight's on the debates coming up here, the very first one in August, uh, and then the convention, the national convention next year, which is unbelievable. So that's pretty fascinating in Milwaukee. Uh, yeah. There'll be a lot of stuff that happens between now and then, John, let's uh, keep the faith and keep fighting for the right things. And, you know, obviously um, this podcast might catch some grief from some people and I just want to say to them, you're welcome to have your comments. It's not a problem. We are, and and fairly, I mean, I'll be happy to talk to any one of you. You know, if you got balls enough to come on and say what you want to say, good. Come on. I'll talk to you. Well, I mean, we, we both care, right? I mean, we yes. say what we say because we care yes. and we want to win. And, and yes. I, I don't think anybody can argue that point. Oh, th they want to win. There's nothing wrong with that. And we care. They right. may not like our approach, but we well, care may and not, we want to win. They may not like um, that we are not favoring Donald Trump this time as a president. And, and my reasoning for that is my own personal reasoning and opinions. Uh, it's not based on anyone else. It's not based on anything that you've ever said to me. You and I just happen to agree 
we um, happen to agree and, and it goes, you know, we care and we want to yes, win. And, yes. and our feeling is we win. I mean, it's very, you know, we don't have to, we, we're, I know we're ending here, but it's very similar to the governor thing. I remember some, actually, somebody said to me recently, you said the same stuff about Rebecca and look yeah. how that turned out. And, but they thought they were like, you know, jamming me on that one. I said, well, exactly. Mm-hmm. Look how it turned out. I was, t- it is the exact same thing. Rebecca had a better chance to beat Evers. Yes, That's why I was telling you yes. that she had to win the primary. DeSantis has a better chance to beat Biden. I'm telling you the same thing. And so, right. so please listen to me this time. <laughs> yeah, try to anyway. At least give us a chance. Um, yeah. And, right. and, you know, you're you're going to vote for who you want to vote for when you get in that, you know, box anyway. And that's fine. That's your choice. And I fought in the Navy <laughs> to make sure that you could do that. So right. you have the right to do that. But I just am saying, look at all the options. Look and see what you stand with. Uh, don't do it because somebody lost in 2020. Do it because it's the right thing for the country and the right thing for all of us. And that's- Get out of your echo chamber and remember that uh, we're a purple state. And remember yes. the 7th District isn't uh, Dane County and Milwaukee County. No. And understand no. what we're dealing with to try to win. So Absolutely. And that's what it, what it comes down to, John, is that you and I both um, have the same kind of uh, background. We both kind of feel the same way about much of this. And we both have been very strong conservatives for a very long time. I mean, I've been in there. I've I've seen how we all and I've seen many of the people, same people, and many of them are all gone. And then there's new people. And this all happened right. in 2020, basically. Well, you know, if Trump, again, if Trump could win. Uh, I wouldn't be as uh, adamant with some of the things I say. I mean, if Tim Rantham can win statewide, um, put a Tim Rantham sign up in my yard. You know, I'm not, this isn't, I mean, sometimes it gets personal, but it's, this, it's it, not. Overall, it's really not personal. No, it's, it's, it's not. not winning. <laughs> it's, yes. I'm looking at it like chess pieces on a board, right? I mean, That's... I don't know Tim Rantham from Adam, and right. I, I hate to even pick on him, but I'm just I using know. him as an example. You know, here's a good example. I, I know we're, somebody asked me the other day, what do you think of Carrie Lake? I said, I don't like her. They're like, you don't like her. I said, well, uh, and then a friend of ours that we both know says, well, you know, she's uh, she'd be a great candidate if she was in a red state. I said, well, that's exactly my point. Why I don't like her. I mean, she, a Tim Rantham type. Again, I'm using him almost as a term like Kleenex. Right. He probably would do well in a very red state statewide. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's all it, my point is it's not personal. It's uh, and it's not personal against Kerry Lake. It's just if you're going to be running in Arizona, you should say different things and act differently. Um, mm-hmm. if you're going to talk like you talk, then you should be running for governor in a deep red state and then you might right. do fine. Yeah, I, yes, I can understand that completely. And I, the, the people that, um, fought against basically what you and I kind of stood for in the last few elections, even, you know, Dan Kelly, I mean, I, I was disheartened the whole thing, you know, obviously, and it's going to, it can change a lot of things for us. And I think a lot of people don't even understand that they just don't get it. They don't understand Wisconsin Supreme Court. They don't understand how things can go. So I hope it doesn't change too much. And we'll see. And that, that'll be the next fight. You know, they, we need to fix our election cycles, too. We just need to. Well, we need to fix our election cycles. And like the long term strategy needs to be we need to fix how a Supreme Court judge is elected. I mean, there's other states that do it differently. We yes. have to talk about it now. Like Indiana is one that does it better, I think. It, it's too important to have it come down to a political election. It's not the way it should should be, I don't think. You know. Me neither. I agree with you 100%. So, yes, we need to look at that, too. And Scott Krug here in my district, he is on the Wisconsin Election Commission, and he is working hard. And I think he had a lot of good to, to say, and I'm really pleased to hear that. He better. And I think Florida runs their Supreme Court uh, appointees like Indiana, where you, I don't know exactly how. It's just better because it sits within recommendations by, you know, um, legal sure. minds and then the yeah. governor gets to choose and the legislature can veto right so right. it would be fair i think yeah. more fair yes um, well and the thing was honestly out of anybody justice kelly was he was already a jurist he, he's just a really smart man made for like supreme court he really is and he was he would not even talk about things that were uh possible to come up into court he wouldn't talk about them and so that's one of the reasons the whole pro life thing just attacked him and it was really well, just sad. Fact, I mean, in hindsight, because it is a political, it's really turned. It has. Yes. Political. Unfortunately, 
Yeah. And I, Doro wouldn't have won. I mean, the, the money, the amount yes. of money we were going up against, it wouldn't have made, you know, maybe Doro does a little better because she picks up some independence, but she still would have got killed. Yeah. Uh, it was maybe terrible. A little better than him. So it was just not, it's just, it. in hindsight, it's, it's not the way to do, do well, it. And that's you the and I both chest. know, I you and out. I both know that it's a lot to do with the candidate. That's for sure. So we have to make sure we choose the right candidates so yeah. we can win. And that's where it is right there. That's we can end it. Yeah. Yes, we'll exactly. It Find the best candidate, clear the, clear the path in a primary, and you're going to be outspent regardless, but don't, don't dig a hole deeper than it has to be. Right. Exactly. And I, I can certainly agree with that. And uh, John, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate you coming on and being a guest and just talking Frank, because I think that is part of what we have to do. We have to do that. Um, and we yeah, have to face like our, that. yeah, we have to face our, our, uh, fragilities. We have to face what happens in our party. We have to face all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. And that's what I always say is there is good, there is bad, and there is ugly. And one of my friends always says, you know, well, yeah, I know they're nuts, but there are nuts. <laughs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> well, we, and we identify the bad. I mean, my, my, I want to say this too. I, I, my intent is so we correct it, you know, yeah. likewise on your friendship. Thanks for having me on. I, uh, Part of me is I'm sitting there going, man, we're I'm all over the place. But that's kind of the beauty of a podcast, right? We can start anywhere, go up anywhere type of thing. We can talk about anything and everything, and we can say whatever right. we want, which is which is freedom of speech, which is what we want. So right. I, I I think that um this is good, John. This is very good. And I'm very glad that you are willing to just come on and talk. And I really appreciate that very much about you. And I no I also <laughs> No, no, there isn't. I mean, we don't go by, I don't even write right. anything down when I'm talking to you. Well, I did read we talk off for of, like 30 seconds and then you hit the live <laughs> button. So. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And uh, I think that most people that listen to podcasts like that too, by the way. So yeah, it's, you a know, human, I, it's a human feel to it. Yeah. When I post it, I'm going to say, there's a very frank discussion, you know, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's what I did yeah. last year with the convention. We, it was the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, yeah. and it certainly had a lot of ugly. So this year, more positive. I'm thankful yes. for some of the people that are involved, and I'm very thankful that we have gotten to be friends over the time. And I appreciate Likewise. your hard work. So thank Likewise. you so Our much. Our picnic is September 24th. I can't remember if I told you that. So oh, um, I plan on I being really there. I haven't advertised yet, but September 24th at Sawyer County Fairgrounds. All right, you guys will be sending out the email information or whatever yeah, and be sign out up in the next few weeks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I plan on being there. So. Um, awesome. Yep, I might bring the podcasting stuff. You never know. Please do. All right. Well, thanks, John. You have a good day and have a great right. weekend. Take you care. Too. Tell, Take care. Tell Christine and Jack I said hey. I will. Have a great weekend. Thanks. You too. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.